And the key verse we just want to focus on there, it says, Moreover your little ones, which ye said should be a prey, and your children which in that day had no knowledge between good and evil, they shall go in thither, and unto them will I give it, and they shall possess it. So, a couple of things there. Remember the principle I talked about is we have to interpret Bible stories. This is a Bible story, right? And then there's, there's a statement made, but then we have to, you know, uh, interpret that statement based on what we know in the New Testament, which is, hey, but the point at which a person dies is when they know. But it seems like this verse is saying, well, they don't have the knowledge between good and evil. So how, Victor, how are you going to explain that? So one thing is, the way I see this verse, I think we just see a glimpse, right? I don't build my doctrine based on this verse, but I think we see a glimpse of the principle in Romans 7 that, hey, if we don't have knowledge, they're not held accountable. And we see here, they didn't have knowledge of good and evil. They weren't held accountable. I think the key to unlock the understanding of this verse is what does the Bible mean when it says the knowledge between good and evil? You know, so it's, it doesn't say here that they didn't have knowledge between right and wrong, right? Right meaning the law, sin, wrong meaning sin, right? It says they had no knowledge between good and evil. Now we know, maybe, maybe the, the newer guys here don't, don't know that we believe this, but you know, not all sin, not all evil is sin. Because God does evil. Remember God, when it talks about Nineveh, you know, God repented of the evil that he said that he would do unto them, and he did it not. So God can, because evil is not sin. Evil is when you harm somebody else. Good is when something good is done to you. Evil is when you are harmed, right? And God can also inflict harm, right? He killed Ananias and Sapphira for lying about how much they gave to church. He did evil to them. Did he sin? No, because God does not sin. So I think that's the key there, that they had no knowledge between good and evil. It doesn't mean that they didn't have knowledge between right and wrong. That they couldn't understand what's the right thing to do and what's the wrong thing to do. They didn't have the knowledge between good and evil. So the question is, what is that knowledge of good and evil that they were referring to? That they didn't have knowledge of? Well, let's um, turn to Numbers 13. So we just go to the chapter before. Verse 25, and they returned from searching of the land after 40 days. So here we pick up, Numbers 13 is when they went in, they spied out the land, they saw everything, and they cut off the grapes at Eskel, and they bring it to the people. So now they've returned. Verse 26, and they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel, unto the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh, and brought backward unto them and unto all the congregation, and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him and said, We came unto the land whither thou sentest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great, and moreover we saw the children of Anak there. These are the giants. And, and the, Amalek, the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. So now they're starting to talk about the negative. And this is what I like about Caleb. He's like, Caleb stilled the people. So he's like, he's like cutting them off. He's like, whoa, 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 right? And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against these people, for they are stronger than us. And look at this key verse in verse 32. And they brought up an evil report of the land. Right? Evil report of the land. Just note that which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land though we, through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. So what's this evil report? They're saying, if we go into this land, bad things are going to happen to us. Right? We're gonna, they're going to eat us up. And that's why they bring up this evil report, because that's what evil is. It's harm that's going to happen to them. And there we saw giants, the sons of Anak, which, which come of the giants. Which we, were, which we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would God we had died in this wilderness? And wherefore hath the Lord brought us unto this land to fall by the sword, that our wives and our children should be a prey? 
Were it not better for us to return into Egypt? So that's the reference there where it says, you know, you thought your children and your little ones would be a prey. And they said one to another, let us make a captain and let us return unto e into Egypt. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. And Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it, look at this, is an exceeding good land. You see, so you see the difference there that the, the, the bad, the spies, the eight spies were, were saying, hey, in there it's evil. They brought up an evil report. The two spies that believed the Lord said, hey, no, it's a good land. And they're trying to bring up a good report of the land that they're going into. Where did I go? Good land. Verse 7. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it us. A land which floweth with milk and honey. Only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land. For they are bread for us. So he's even saying, hey, even the things that are bad in there, they're good for us. Bread for us. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. So when we go back to Deuteronomy 1, right? Oops. What is this knowledge between good and evil? Is it saying here that the little ones are ignorant of the law and don't know the difference between right and wrong and that's why they were led into the land? Or are they saying they didn't have knowledge of good or evil? Because what happened? The, eight, the ten spies came back. They raised the report, right? Eight of them said, hey, it's evil. Two of them said, no, 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 it's a good land. But did everybody else know necessarily? Because we could say, well, maybe that's why they didn't have knowledge between good and evil, because it was the men of the children of Israel talking. And it was the men that wanted to stone Caleb and Joshua. Maybe the women and the children, the little ones, weren't part of this discussion. So they don't even know the good and evil that would await them. And that's why they have no knowledge between good and evil. Now, another verse that could be brought up is Genesis 3. So in light of the understanding there of what good and evil is and the knowledge of good and evil, um, I just wanted to go quickly to Genesis 3. Um, because this is another verse um, that is used to support the other view. And whilst it's reasonable, I think there's another explanation in light of, just, of what we've just talked about. So Genesis 3.22, we're at the beginning now where obviously Adam and Eve are, are living in paradise, you know, sinless. And now they've just committed that sin of eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Not the, not the tree of the knowledge of right and wrong, right? The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It says here in verse 22, And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us to know good and evil. And now lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. So the contrary view at 20 years old will say, Ah, see, like they also, before they, before they reached that point of accountability, did not have this knowledge between good and evil. And, and then they apply that to then the Deuteronomy and Numbers verses. But with the understanding that I've just explained of the Numbers verse and the Deuteronomy verse where they did not know about the good that would await them or the evil that would await them, we can also apply that understanding to this. Not to say that Eve, Adam and Eve did not know the difference between right and wrong and did not understand the commandment of God, but that they didn't know the good and evil that would await them until they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And you say, well, then didn't they know good? They were living in paradise, right? So one way you could understand this is Number one, you could say, well, do you really know good without knowing evil? If, that's, if it's just good all the time, can you really say you understand good if it's always good for you? Or you can say they always understood good because that's how they lived, and now they know both. So the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, meaning they only knew good before, now they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and now they know good and evil. But with that understanding, we can say, well, it's not that they were ignorant of the law, which is what we learned in Romans 7. Romans 7 is you're ignorant of the law, then when you understand the law, you die spiritually. Is that what's happening here? No, they don't know. They don't have the knowledge of good and evil, but do they have the knowledge of right and wrong? I believe they do, because when you go up... Ugh, where am I going? Sorry, this laptop is getting old. Look here. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, 
Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. So this shows that Eve did have an understanding of the law. She did understand, hey, this is what God said we can do. This is what God said we can't do. And she understood the punishment. That if you ate of the tree, or she added, you know, touch it, she says, we're going to die. So we can't say that Adam and Eve were ignorant of the law and apply it to the contrary view. They did know the law. They knew the punishment. And that's why they were held accountable for when they sinned. You know, because they understood. And now they know the difference between good and evil. And if we uh, compare that to the good and evil talked about in Numbers 14, that makes sense. So that's how I think we can understand Deuteronomy 1 in light of Romans 7 um, and have a consistent view, which I think is um, a little bit more reasonable in my, my point of view and more biblical.